You've seen police body camera videos, but maybe never like this. Essentially, the librarians are, the, are my suspects. Mm -hmm. If they're the ones that are choosing books and putting them in there, you know, they're the ones that are carrying the, the criminal liability. You're watching a Hood County constable telling Granbury ISD school superintendent Jeremy Glenn that his school librarians are suspected of crimes. The constable visits Granbury schools in May of 2022, searching for library books he suspects are obscene. There's one. And attempting to question librarians, librarians who are now targets of a criminal investigation. If you want to hear what I have to say, you're welcome to stay. And if, if you don't, you can go back to the library. I mean, but I wanted to afford you the opportunity to sit down and hear what I have to say and, and see if you wanted to say anything or not. NBC5 Investigates obtained the videos through an open records request, along with a more than 800-page case file detailing the constable's nearly two-year investigation. The records reveal the constable drafted criminal complaints, submitting them to a district attorney, seeking felony charges against three librarians for distributing harmful materials to minors. These women that are amazing educators and librarians had been terrified for over two years now that they're going to get arrested, hauled off to jail on a felony charge. Granbury attorney Paul Hyde has spoken with two of the librarians since the early days of the investigation. Hyde served on a parent committee that voted to keep some of the controversial books in the libraries and says debates over books should be resolved by school boards, not with handcuffs. Law enforcement had no business being involved in this debate whatsoever. Nothing in that situation rises to the level of a criminal charge. We've seen some investigations into libraries, but this went a lot further. Uh, you had here uh, police putting together uh, indictments and preparing for an arrest of librarians. Free speech attorney Adam Steinbaugh tracks the nation's culture wars over books and says the Granbury case appears to be one of the most extensive attempts to prosecute librarians. The nation's oldest library association says the case strikes fear in all librarians. No library professional, no educational professional should face these threats. We're simply doing the job and attempting to serve the needs of their students or serve the needs of their community. In Granbury, the district attorney ultimately declined to file charges in April, telling the constable in an email the evidence was insufficient to prove a felony. NBC5 investigates is not identifying the librarians because they were not charged with any crimes and they have declined to speak with us about the investigation. Case records show the books targeted by the constable include The Bluest Eye by Nobel Prize winning author Toni Morrison, often taught in high school literature classes, but for decades it's generated controversy over its depiction of sexual abuse. Under Texas law, a book cannot be deemed harmful to children just because it has explicit content. The book must also be found to have no redeeming social value for minors. I'm doing a criminal investigation into some of your staff. The chief deputy constable, Scott London, launched his investigation after two Granbury women who wanted a list of books removed from the schools say London approached them and asked if they would file a complaint. London has acknowledged contacting the women after hearing them speak at a Republican meeting. He told us in 2022 that he reviewed the pornography statute with the women and they filed a report because they believed there was a case. Book debates were raging in Granbury and other Texas cities after Governor Abbott directed schools to identify and remove obscene content. NBC5 investigates requested to interview London for this report. He told us he and his boss, Constable Chad Jordan, would provide a written statement but they've not responded to questions we sent. London is a former New Mexico sheriff and a supporter of the far-right constitutional sheriff's movement, even appearing at constitutional sheriff training events captured in social media photos. The movement promotes the idea that local law enforcement officers can disregard laws they personally deem unconstitutional. London ran for Hood County Sheriff last year but lost. He denied his political or personal views influenced the library investigation in an interview with us for a report that aired in 2023. Is that part of a, a constitutional sheriff or, or constitutional constable's role? Uh, it, has, it has nothing to do with the Constitution. 
The case records show London did not give up on his efforts to arrest the librarians after the DA declined to bring charges. He wrote to the DA suggesting if charges could not be proven beyond a reasonable doubt, arrests could be made on the lower threshold of probable cause, telling the prosecutor the decision not to charge may unintentionally communicate a weak message, a message that a case must be conviction ready before your office would even consider it. Critics say his approach is concerning. If you believe that you can't prove someone is guilty, but you're going to go and arrest them anyway, you know, what respect do you have for the Constitution? A case that stirred a community and astonished librarians across America. Scott Friedman, NBC5 Investigates.